Hey guys and welcome back to another video looking at 1.35am. Now, firstly, this is probably going to be the last video analysing it and theorising about it, but um, since last video I have been looking at it a lot and <laughs> I've been trying to make up theories, but I got such a good set of theories in the comments below. Um, that I, I've thought about those ones even more and they're just so good and I think they are probably what Scott has intended um, for this book. Now I'm going to show you the, the comment on the screen along with the description of the book and the front cover and uh, this is a comment by Supply Drop who uh, I actually talked to and he says Delilah gives me some major FNAF 4 vibes with dreams and waking up early. Could Stanley's mysterious employer be Fazbear Entertainment or perhaps Afton Robotics? And this one is a bit of a stretch. Could Devon's story give us insight into William Afton's childhood? Being ignored by your parents could really mess with a young child's brain. Give us an insight to why he kills children instead of adults. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. We're going to talk about this today. This is, this is what we are focusing on. Um, literally just this one comment so I am very impressed thank you for that comment um, because now I've got something to talk about <laughs> so let's start off with the first story as we as we should um, it's about uh, Delilah as we said in the last video and it's about um, well she's orphaned from a young age and recently divorced and she escapes deeper into her dreams every night in desperate need of a wake-up call Okay, so, dreams. Where have we heard about dreams before? FNAF 4. Um, we've... <laughs> FNAF... Well, I'm not saying that everything from before FNAF 4 is a dream. Um, but FNAF 4 contains the Nightmare Animatronics, right? And they're called that for a reason. Okay, so let's say that this story has the basis of, say, FNAF 4, right? Because Delilah is someone uh, getting night traumas um, and she's, she needs a wake-up call uh, and this wake-up call apparently is gonna be um, this animatronic who is Ella how did I how did I not piece that together before uh, this is Ella from from the books um, anyway she acts as an alarm clock uh, that goes off at 1 35 a.m. which is why it's called 1 35 um, and it wakes her up from her dreams don't I don't know I don't know how this story is gonna play out exactly but why would Scott do this why would we need a story about this well it's gonna clear some things up about FNAF 4 isn't it it's clearly gonna uh, clear things about um, that we don't know about the nightmare animatronics and and if they really exist if they were just tests uh, I know Matt Pat pointed out the the human brain and uh, in nightmare maybe um, we could get some clearance on who the nightmares are and how they work uh, and even the plot for FNAF 4 um, things to do with a crying child for example um, I feel like it, it's gonna have a, a big FNAF 4 style to it the other thing to mention as I said in the last video is the first stories are where people are always drawn to the pizzerias okay um, what if we changed that? What if what if we went further and said that it was specifically drawn to an animatronic? Okay, so Oswald, <coughs> Oswald in Into the Pit was drawn to um, to the Spring Bonnie costume that nobody else could see. Um, in Fetch, um, I think it was called Greg. Greg was drawn to fetch. So in this story we could easily have um, Delilah uh, being drawn towards Ella, okay? Um, and I think it says somewhere, I didn't, it's not confirmed, but Ella is picked up from a yard sale. So um, a bit like to be beautiful in that sense. Okay, so let's let's go to the second one. So this is the one 
actually, let's do let's do the second one last. Let's I'm gonna because the second one is the most believable, and I really like the theory for the second story, and it's always the creepiest, as I said. Um, third story. Let's go to the third story. So, again, this one's a stretch, um, but we believe that Devon could be drawing parallels to William Afton uh, in the fact that he was abandoned by his mum uh, and ignored by his dad. No, sorry, the other way around. But uh, he can't explain why love and friendship come so easy to everyone except him. So he is a person who gets hate all around, um, but all around he sees other people with uh, relationships, friendships and stuff, uh, and his parents are mean to him. So it could, in the way, tell the story of Afton's origins and his motives, um, but we're not too sure about that. Again. We're just going to have to wait and see. I don't think that's going to be it. But um, it, it's a stretch. And it's it's quite a good theory. Um, why William is the way he is. But I feel like it has something to do with the conflict between him and Henry. Um, but moving on. Um, this is the big one. <clears throat> Before I go on to this one. Make sure that you are subscribed. So that I can catch you up when I read these stories. I'll be one of the first ones to read them. Uh, hopefully, anyway. And um, and if you're not subscribed to me, then what is the point? <laughs> you won't find out what happens in the second book until Matt Pat uploads his video like a month later. Uh, sorry, that was just a subtle roast. Uh, <laughs> I have no beef with him. Also, I've just opened up memberships. So if you want to be a member, uh, please feel free. Uh, you don't need to though, of course, uh, you'll still get the same amount of content if you don't become a member. But you do get a few extra perks. Anyway, let's go on to the second story. Um, I don't know how how I missed this in the first video, I was just like, okay, so the second story is about this, but we don't get much more information, so let's just move on. That is not the case. We are told that Stanley is newly dumped and stuck in a dead-end job for a mysterious employer and unable to connect with anyone. Who is this mysterious employer? I may as well quit YouTube at this point. Of course, the mysterious employer could be one of two options, I think. Fazbear Entertainment or Afton Robotics. It'd be interesting if it was Afton Robotics. It really would, but I'd like to think it is Fazbear Entertainment. It's a mysterious, like, mysterious is a strange adjective, right? <laughs> um, why would they be mysterious? Maybe they're hiding things. Ooh, maybe they've been hired by William Afton, uh, and he's hiding things from us. Something like that, maybe. Um, the other thing is, what time period this takes place in? Because I have a sneaky suspicion that this book could easily be linked to FNAF VR okay um, and maybe even FNAF 9 um, let's let's think about this if you're being employed uh, to Fazbear Entertainment you can be a few things you could be a technician a mechanic um, like a businessman you could be very many things but I feel like they're gonna be two one of two things either a night guard or a game developer slash tester okay uh, and the reason I think that is because it could either take place before a Fazbear Fright or after Fazbear Fright Fazbear Fright being not the books but the place in FNAF 3. Um, I, I just say pre FNAF 3 and uh, post FNAF 3. So, if he's a night guard, okay, we're, we're following the story of a night guard. We might may get, may get some clearance on night guard stuffs. Um, I, I'd like. I'd like to know what's happening in FNAF 2 with the Night Guards, that's still kind of puzzling to me. Um, but if it's a game developer, wow, okay, Scott is doing some magical stuff with his imagination. And the reason is because the second story in each book so far, as we've, as we've said, there's a pattern. And it's about body swapping, 
Okay. So, in the first one... <laughs> sorry, I have to go through this. Um, we, we body swapped with this baby Eleanor. We, we, with Eleanor. Um, in the second one, we body swapped with a lonely Freddy. In the third one... I have a sneaky suspicion that it could definitely have something to do with glitch trap. And one thing that I do want to point out here is in the description it does say stuck in a dead end job for a mysterious employer and unable to connect with anyone. Now that could have the meaning of okay I can't connect with people as in uh, I, I, I don't feel like I get on well with people. But it could have a literal meaning, right? It could mean, literally, I can't connect to people. And the way that they resolve that is by having this glitch or this new entity connect with you. Literally connect with you. Okay? So, now they're not lonely. And I think this entity could be glitch trap. So, I have a feeling that this could take place kind of during, like before or during FNAF uh, 9 when it comes out. Uh, Pizza Plex, even though that's not the name. What else do I think? What do I think this is going to say for us? Like, what? why would Scott do this? I don't know. But that would be a really cool story if it was one. That kind of concludes everything that Supply Drop says. Thank you again. Uh, texty and um, there's just one more thing that I want to say before I end this out I think all of these stories are connected I really do I think they all happen after all of the events of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza this is the leftovers of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. You've got all of these animatronics in um, in like cars and yard sales um, and, and people are finding them everywhere you know this grandpa's got a fun time Freddy okay we found this baby animatronic in a car um, they've all got relevance they've, they're all very different but they all take place in the same time period and I think that's something to point out and I think it's also kind of putting more layers onto the FNAF story that's being rebooted and now bringing us into FNAF 9 and I have a feeling FNAF 9 is going to come out after all of these stories has come out unfortunately um, but that would be pretty cool of Scott to basically tease loads of stories and tease an entire game from the books. Anyway, I've talked for 20 minutes now, uh, and I shouldn't have been. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Remember, please do like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe. Become a member if you want to, um, and I'll see you later. Goodbye!